Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Marketing Research. My name is Dr. Andrew Baker, and I'm going to be the professor taking you on a journey learning all about marketing research this semester. In this video, we're going to cover a few important topics that get us oriented for the class. First, we're going to introduce the class overall. We'll cover a few important highlights about the syllabus, even though you have to read it thoroughly on your own. We'll talk a little bit about the group projects that are going to be happening this semester. And we'll conclude with a little bit of conversation about course organization and processes unique to this course. First, what the heck is marketing research and why is this important to you? What are some course specific learning outcomes that you're going to master at the end of this course? And finally, what are some pragmatic benefits of this course? Perhaps it's a little obvious, but this marketing research course is in fact about marketing research which means it's going to teach you how to properly consume, critique, create, and communicate marketing research, and then make marketing decisions based on evidence. One of the things you'll notice here is words like consume, critique, and make decisions. In other words, even if you're not someone who makes marketing research a part of your everyday life in terms of actually doing it in your career, you're still someone who's going to, have to interact with it and decide whether or not you can rely on it. As such, this class will serve you well. Another reason you should probably be interested in this course is whenever a new survey is conducted, asking marketing professionals what sort of skills are in need or demand in the field, marketing research and analysis skills almost always pop up at the top of the list. In terms of the formal learning outcomes for this course, you should be able to describe marketing research and what types of information it can provide and how it is used by marketing management identify and explain alternative research methods and their relative strengths and weaknesses, identify and describe types of measurement techniques and data collection methods, analyze data obtained through marketing research using the SPSS software or other statistical software. You should be able to write a marketing research report and make an oral presentation of the research results. Finally, make sound tactical and strategic business decisions based on the proper interpretation of marketing research results. In other words, TLDR, at the end of this course, you should be able to do marketing research with skill. A few other pragmatic benefits of this course is it's a great resume builder. At the end of this course, you're going to have your name attached to a complete end-to-end -end marketing research project. It'll be very thorough, hopefully very high quality, and something that you can use to show off your skills to future employers. In addition, you're going to gain skills and experience using Qualtrics perhaps the most popular online software for developing surveys and experiments. In addition, you're going to really hone in some of your statistical skills because you're going to gain skill and experience using SPSS, one of the more popular high-end powerful pieces of statistical software used by marketing professionals. Finally, and it's entirely fair if you're a little skeptical right now, you should have a lot of fun in this course. A very common experience for students who take this course is that it's challenging, it's very tough, they didn't really want to have to take it, but it was required, but at the end, they're surprised to find out that they really do enjoy the marketing research process, and they enjoy learning how to investigate, how to find out whether or not a particular marketing issue that they've always wondered about is true or not. In this section, I'd like to highlight a few important issues that are highlighted in the syllabus, but please remember it is still your responsibility to read the syllabus thoroughly and contact me to make sure that we're all 100% clear on what the course expectations are. The textbooks that we use for this class are three free online PDFs called Basic Marketing Research Volume 1, 2, and 3. I skip around a little bit in terms of which chapters and which volume you're expected to read to prepare for class, so please be careful and make sure you know what you're supposed to be uh, reading before class begins. In addition, you'll notice that we all are going to create Qualtri uh, Qualtrics accounts. Uh, Qualtrics is a very high powered online survey platform. And luckily, because of our relationship with San Diego State University, we are able to gain access and create full functioning accounts. However, that means you need to go to a specific portal, sdsubusiness.qualtrics.com when you make your free account. Also, make sure you use your sdsu.edu email address. Some students who still have the old at mail.sdsu.edu email addresses may have to create their account using that version of your email. 
Unfortunately, there is one expensive component of this course, and that's the statistical software that you'll be using, SPSS. Make sure you purchase the most recent version of SPSS. At the time of this recording, we're on version 25, but IBM has a propensity to make a new version release every single year. In addition, make sure you order the correct version. For students, there's the Grad Pack Base, Grad Pack Standard, and Grad Pack Premium. You'll need to purchase the standard version. Fortunately, it's a little bit more, but it has some functionality and features that are valuable to you. If you check the syllabus, I recommend a few online de dealers that you can use to go and purchase the software online and install it. There are some prerequisites for this course, and it's important to keep in mind that if you don't have the prereqs, you will be dropped from the course. Just because you're in the course now does not mean that you're guaranteed a spot. It is your responsibility to confirm that you meet the prerequisites. Specifically, you must have passed MIS 301 with a C- minus or better. Not a D+, plus, not a D, a C- minus or better. Similarly, BA 370, the introductory marketing course, must have been passed with a C or better. In many cases, I don't have your prerequisites on file, this is usually because you are taking a summer course or you took a class in the previous semester that hasn't quite registered yet, or perhaps you studied abroad and you're a special use case exception. In all instances, it is your responsibility to physically present documentation to me. I will need copies of this documentation to keep it on file. And an important note, oftentimes students ask me if I will waive the prerequisites because they need to graduate on time. I do not, make, I do not use this as an excuse. You must meet these prerequisites because it ensures that you have the basic knowledge necessary to succeed in this challenging course. So sometimes students get a little frustrated with prerequisites because they seem like arbitrary barriers keeping you from taking the course and graduating on time. That's entirely fair. So let me talk a little bit about what the actual prerequisites are for this course. In other words, why do we require you to have those two classes with a certain grade level? First, the BI 370 prerequisite ensures that you understand the basic principles of marketing. You understand what marketing is as a philosophy and as a business process. You understand basic processes like segmentation, targeting, positioning, branding. In other words, I don't have to teach you about what segmentation is. You know what it is. Or if you don't know what it is, you understand it's your responsibility to get back up to speed. Basic marketing concepts that all marketers use in their day-to-day -day life to think about the marketing world, such as the difference between consumers, customers, what the four P's are, uh, what the marketing environment is constituted of. These are terms that I will use in this class and I expect you to know. It is not my responsibility nor the goal of this course to teach them for you. It is your responsibility to bring yourself up to speed if you are a little behind on some of these topics. The next real prerequisite is the one that many students are challenged by. When you enter this course, because of your prerequisites, that means you understand basic statistical analyses. That is, terms like z-value, confidence interval, standard errors, variance, you understanding the importance of random sampling. These are all things that you should have a functional grasp of. You understand basic univariate analyses, such as mean, median, mode, variance, kurtosis, and so on. And most importantly, you understand how to do multivariate analyses such as the independent sample t-test, the chi-square difference test, the Pearson correlation. These are just a few. Since one of the responsibilities of the marketing researcher is to conduct proper analysis of the data that is collected, that clearly implies that you should have a functional knowledge of statistical tests that are appropriate. Lastly, and it's the most advanced topic that you would have covered in your MIS 301 course, you understand how to do and interpret multiple linear regression. I want to reiterate, we use these statistical tools extensively in this course. You're expected to deploy them correctly in order to conduct your analysis. You're expected to present on them both written and orally, and you'll be tested on your ability to understand how to use them and how to interpret them. These tools will be used. These are the everyday statistical analysis tools that marketing researchers use. Unfortunately, it is my experience that often students who are exposed to these concepts or practice these concepts in previous courses anticipated that that was the last time they'd ever be confronted with these statistical tests. That's simply not so. In addition, this is not the last time you'll be confronted with these tests in the marketing world either. These are pervasive throughout your marketing career. In terms of grading in this class, I follow directly the SDSU policy file, and I'm quoting here. 
A letter grade of A stands for outstanding achievement. It's available only for the highest accomplishment, quoting from the policy file. B's praiseworthy performance, definitely above average. C is average, awarded for satisfactory performance. It's the most common undergraduate grade. Again, quoting from the policy file. D is minimally passing, less than the typical undergraduate achievement, and F is failing. This is the typical range of grade distributions that, are, that has been seen. Notably, the most typical score earned by students is a C. Less common, B, and least common of all, an A. Next, let's talk a bit about the group projects that you'll be doing in this course. You may have noticed in the syllabus that a large percentage of your final grade is, is attributed to these group projects. So let's make sure we're all on the same page. Talking about marketing research is useful, but you don't really learn how to do it until you, in fact, actually do marketing research. The course is organized around two interrelated group projects. In the first project, you define and create a marketing research proposal. Your team will come up with a research question that you want to investigate, and you'll propose a high-quality, feasible research design. In project two, you'll actually go out and collect data and conduct analysis and interpret the results based on that marketing research proposal. Please keep in mind that there is a lot of documentation that I have for these group projects. The files that you'll be reviewing and, and using to base your projects on are quite extensive. Lots of appendices that show you how to do things, a lot of tips, tricks, and very specific requirements. So pay close attention and review the group project assignment files carefully. Hey, there's you. You're getting your hands dirty. Perhaps most troubling is that little piece of mud that's sticking on that person's tooth, though. Ugh. Some other important details about the group projects. Three to six members, but I highly recommend that you select four to five. Three or six happen as a last resort. You can form your own teams, but I always reserve the right to move, remove, or alter a team structure. Keep in mind that your peers are going to evaluate you and it does impact your final grade. In addition, while my intention is to make sure that the group project final grade is shared by everybody, aside from the peer evaluations, I always reserve the right to assign individual grades to individual team members for group projects. Finally, teams will have to meet in person outside of class to succeed on these group projects. Through talking with teams that have been highly successful in these group projects in the past, it is abundantly clear that meeting, collaborating, and working together, not remotely, not via text message, but in person, leads to positive outcomes. Lastly, let's talk a little bit about course organization and some processes that we use in this course. We have a diverse array of communication channels that we're going to be using for this course. We're going to be using Blackboard for announcements, perhaps a message board, and all of the assignment files, submission areas, and assorted video content links. In addition, we will be using a Slack channel. If you haven't used Slack before, check it out. It's really cool. And there's a very good chance that Slack is something that you'll be using in your workplace. Think of it sort of as Facebook Messenger blended with project management appropriate for the workplace, or in this case, a classroom. When we don't meet physically in person, but we'd like to see each other and see what's going on on each other's screens, we will schedule Google Hangout meetings. Lastly, and this is my least preferred communication, channel, you can email me at my Gmail account, abaker at sdsu.edu. In terms of preparing for class on any given day, whether we're meeting in person or we're meeting remotely or we're meeting asynchronously, make sure you check the schedule and look for announcements for any required content. Readings and videos and other tasks are due before class begins. Please keep in mind the required readings are not the same as the videos and are not the same as lectures. In other words, you may have had an experience previously in your collegiate career where the lecture slides were nothing more than a rehashing of the chapter readings. This is not the case in this course. Each one of these required pieces of content contributes uniquely to your learning outcomes. For due dates and deadlines, unless otherwise specifically noted, assignments, projects, and tasks are due before class begins on the given day. This is important in case I accidentally make a little misclick with, with the Turnitin system or the Blackboard submission portal. Keep in mind that always, unless I very, very clearly say otherwise, you have to have these things done at the beginning of class. Again, 
For class preparation, just remember that I do not do textbook story time. Your chapter readings and the lectures and videos are entirely different. Also, many of the hands-on activities that we do in this class, both for the group project and within a given class period, require you or potentially your group to have completed or at least partially complete a series of activities prior to meeting in class that day. Check carefully to make sure that you're prepared. This is not the kind of class where you can look five minutes before class begins about what we're up to and what needs to be done. Finally, it is very important to me that you understand the expectations for this course and you understand what you're getting into. And as such, I have a course expectation and learning contract that you can find on the Blackboard system. Please read it, sign it, and if there's anything you're unclear about, ask about it. As marketers, we know that satisfaction with experiences is partly a function of those expectations. I want to make sure that those expectations are set very clearly. Okay, so you've watched this video, you've checked out the Blackboard and nosed around a little bit, you've checked out Slack, the Dr. Baker SDSU YouTube channel, you saw the textbook and software you need to buy, read the syllabus more thoroughly, yet again. Let's get on with it. Let's learn marketing research.